Hello and welcome to the first episode of a new Guild Wars 2 podcast from Guild Mag. Uh, I'm Valiant and alongside me we have the gorgeous Casey over that way and I've just pulled out my headphones. That's a great start. Uh, and Casey's muted her microphone. <laughs> it's complete! <laughs> if I don't unmute my microphone then... Wow, that is the best start oh, to a podcast we could hope for. <laughs> Uh. All this, all this nervous energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we are going to be guiding you through all the Guild Wars Two news each week uh, with this podcast, along with patch discussions, various law segments, uh, and a whole load of other awesome stuff. Um, for those of you not watching this live, you can of course catch us every Thursday at ten AM GMT on Twitch.tv slash Guildmag, where you can share your views with us in the chat as we go along. Uh, so, this week we're going to be taking a look at the third episode of the second Living World season, entitled uh, The Dragon's Reach Part 1. Uh, we're also going to be discussing some data mine tidbits um, and more, but first, Casey's going to do a quick rundown of this week's news. News, yes. Uh, so, the big news that maybe, hopefully, you haven't been living under a rock and you know that uh, the patch came, Dragon's Reach, uh, part one. So, that means there's going to be a part two, and I don't know how many parts, but maybe just two. Um, and I'll just read the little uh, caption. It says, With an elder dragon's corruption spreading, the heroes of Tyria set out in an attempt to gather allies to meet this new threat. But with problems of their own close to home, will the world leaders add their support or just introduce more challenges? Exciting. Uh, and then in the gem store, we have home portal stones, uh, which are just uh, stones that teleport you to your home instance and then teleport you back again. Uh, a mini scruffy, which is Tiny's uh, magical golem. And the black lion chests have hair change contracts, permanent hair change contracts. Um, and a monkey king tonic, which is pretty cool. And we're, I think we're going to link some... Uh, photos later and the new rewards that have come out are in top dry are these cow couts kites found in buried locked chests um, and these are really interesting because they actually seem to give you swiftness buffs uh, from what I've read so that is the news in a nutshell like a little summary and we'll be going more in depth later in the show we will um, so let's just jump straight into it then I guess um, general opinions of the patch did we enjoy it or not um i've quite enjoyed it i actually um my first thought when i logged in oh before we start actually um we probably will be talking about spoilers during this um mm. so if you haven't yet played it and you are watching this live you might want to turn off and watch the recorded version later if you'd rather go play it or of course you could just listen to us explain it dreadfully um either <laughs> one <laughs> Selling our podcast so well here. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. yeah so, so, did you enjoy it? I, you know what? I, overall, I actually have enjoyed it. Um, when I first logged in, I first went to the Iron Marches and saw all those big vines everywhere. I was like, oh wow, that looks, that does look quite cool. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, there's events and things going on. Um, overall, yes, I probably haven't enjoyed it as much as the last one. That I mean, that did probably take some beating. Um, and then again, you could argue that this is obviously only part one of a part, potentially two or three, however, you know, I'm guessing two parts um, based on the fact it's their anniversary in a bit, um, mm. which we'll talk about later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, overall, I get, I get a thumbs up. How about you? Yeah. Uh, it's really good. I'm glad I got a thumbs up because when we were talking about it earlier, when you're having all the trouble with the glitches, I yeah. was a bit worried. I was a bit like, oh, this is not going to get rated very highly. <laughs> but um, I was really lucky. I got in all the right uh, instances, all the right overflows, thanks to uh, some great guildies of mine who were just porting everyone to the good servers or the good overflows. And I managed to get everything done in the first day. Um, and so I really got a good, like, I didn't have any of that problem of having to uh, worry about whether I'm going to get it done or not and getting frustrated. So I absolutely loved it. I mean, you can't top the last uh, patch. I mean, that's going to take some doing to top that one. But regardless, it was still a really good patch and I really, really enjoyed it. I, uh, I'm so excited to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
One thing I did want to pick up on though is I'm really glad they're maintaining their theme of a changing world and landscape because these vines mm. are really kind of quite destructive um, mm. in that landscape. And it definitely reminded me of things that have happened, you know, in LA and Kessex Hills and stuff. Um, mm. and I'm glad to see they're continuing with that. Um, but speaking of the release bugs, um, that is something that I so. I logged in to play the patch on Wednesday, um, and I <coughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and I got um, about halfway through, I guess, until uh, I was stopped by one of the bugs in Frostgorge. I think is the map. Mm, um, yep. And it meant I couldn't play it anymore. And for me, it did kind of put a downer on it. Um, I do want to bring up that you'd think by now that how do these things get past, you know, QA and into the live version? Um, I mean, mm. they've, you know, it's not like the concept and the event is new to them and, you know, making sure they work with other ones. Um, so it, like, overall, it hasn't affected me too much, but I was annoyed that I couldn't play it when I had the time to. Um, mm. You know, it meant I was I was stood there for an hour hoping they'd patch it while I was able to um, just stood on top of a building crying <laughs> so lonely so sad sounding it was, it took, it took me a good 10 minutes to actually work out how to jump up there to begin with um, so that kept me entertained channeling your frustration <laughs> um, well I but. have to say like those sort of glitches um, are very uh, rare these days like I remember when we first started playing Stalling bugs were everywhere. I mean, I remember you couldn't get um, skill points. You, there's events that would just be stalled, and everyone just go and it just everyone just it was part of map exploration that some events would be stalled, and they seem to have really weeded it out really well. Like, because I did map completion with my husband recently, and we didn't get any of those problems. Uh, so this obviously is something that's come back around again. The problem with the uh, the stalling bugs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I like I said, I didn't really have too much trouble. One of the trouble I did have was Frostgore sound like you, and actually I finished the event. I went woohoo, and then I disconnected, and the servers rolled back, ah. and I didn't have it done, <laughs> and that was a big bummer. Just you know, wow. <laughs> especially the rollback, and people were saying in map chat that it had happened four times for them. I can just imagine the frustration they must feel. Yeah. That that must not be fun. Um, mm. So, I mean, to me, it brings up the question, I think we've asked this before on previous podcasts for those you know who might have watched it, um, is the two-week cycle too much? Again, like, I mean, it's great content, but if things like this continue to happen, is it worth, you know, is it worth having that two-week cycle if for the first few days there's patches that basically are game-breaking in a sense? Mm. Mm. Um, yeah especially when it's the problem that's breaking is not so much new stuff but very old stuff mm. you know old events that have been there for a long time I uh, I do kind of feel sorry for Anet because for them it's either two weeks like, I, in their mentality I feel that it's either two weeks or a month like you don't get starting to three weeks because that's when the you know it's not a consistent you know yeah. time and it gets a bit odd so it's either two weeks or one month one month is way too long in my opinion I get way bored um, and if they're going to be making more content to last us a month, it still doesn't, you know, you're still making more content. And two weeks seems like it just doesn't give enough testing. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. Um, although we do have to give them some slack. This is the first time they've integrated events with the story journal and with, you know, the instances trying to get them to work. So hopefully, um, fingers crossed, they'll have stamped it out by, you know, part two and future. Um, yeah, I have to say I'm impressed that they haven't got any of the story stuff like there's been no glitch stopping you from getting story completion. If you're in an instance, it's perfect. Yeah. If you're in but I think the thing with instances is if something goes wrong, you can just exit and reset it yeah. all and go back in where servers are a bit harder. Yeah. Um But Oh go on. Go on. No, no, go on. I was no go on. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> that was so shy. <laughs> I was going to <laughs> I was going to say um so like uh this comes into the one of the questions that we wanted to talk about was is 
why why are they bringing these um these world events in on, when it was very previously very story oriented very instant oriented and then all of a sudden they've put in the uh, world events and all of a sudden we've got all these problems and I was wondering why would they do it and was it worth it for whatever reason they put it in yeah um so I mean I did what in the first episode one or two of the living world it was pretty much all instanced apart from the events that you didn't have to do to complete the story journal and I part of me felt like I loved it but part of me felt like it wasn't an MMO um Mm. it was you know I could have been in a single player RPG at that moment in time Mm -hmm. um and I was like during those two I was wondering are they ever going to integrate events with this you know new instanced approach um and obviously they've started to do that now um and I genuinely think it is the way forward um I Overall, as a concept, I like it. Um, I think, I think it's good to ha- you know have that interaction while you're doing the story with other people, and you kind of share a common goal rather than just you're in an instance. Um, you know, maybe with a couple of friends mm-hmm. if you've chosen to. Um, however, even even without the bugs, I'm not a massive fan of how they've implemented it so far. Um, the first yeah. the first time you encounter it during this release is in uh, the Iron Marches. And you have to basically participate in an event uh, where you have to kill a Mordrum something or other. I can't remember what its name was. Yeah, um, Mordrum. Eh, Mordrum something. Mordrum something. <laughs> um, yeah, big fat Mordrum. Oh, yeah, guy. he's <laughs> he's basically an elite boss that has the champion, the health of a champion for some reason. Um, anyway, and you have to complete it to carry on. But the thing is, you you basically activate that event by speaking to an NPC but everyone's activating the event. So as soon as it's finished, it's back again. And it, it doesn't feel like a dynamic event anymore. You know, if you go back to the manifesto, dynamic events are meant to be things that change the world and you're, you know, you're progressing a kind of storyline. So mm. you have these chained events that if you fail, something happens, if you succeed, something else happens. But with this, it's literally, you kill a boss, it respawns instantly. Kill it again, kill yeah. it again. And yeah. I don't like that implementation because I don't, I don't think it doesn't feel necessary at that point Mm. you know Mm. that literally might as well be an instance what's the point of it being an event apart from playing with everyone else Um, Mm. I think something better to do uh, would be to kind of have these chained events so that you could there'll always be one for you to do but you'll actually be progressing something it won't just be the same event over and over um, yeah, I imagine it'd be more work, but that that's how I feel anyway. How about you? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say we've got some really good comments in the chat section. Yeah. Which uh, Priest Tully says uh, the thing with having open world events in the living world is that if the events complete a second before you get there, you get to progress without doing anything. So you know, you just walk up to the guy and go, oh, "I've done it," and you know. Yeah. And he goes, and it's bad design. And I agree, like you're not, you're missing out on content. Um, and then Dragon Caesar says tying up open world events, uh, tying sorry, tying up open world events to the journal really limits future iterations of the map which is very true you know yeah what are they going to do and you see in lion's arch um you see in lion's arch where the the story goes through the map and it's all in ruins and all the everyone's like oh it's a bustling city (laughs) i'm selling apples by the ruins you know (laughs) that sort of thing it doesn't quite work that well yeah um something you actually brought up while we were talking earlier is um, if people want to play this sort of a year mm-hmm. f- down the road from now, are they going to be able to complete these events that you need to in order to carry on with this story? You know, like these ones mm-hmm. where you have to kill these you yeah. know, champions, basically. Um, yeah, the uh, one in First Gorge Sound. I mean, it's not... It, when it scales down, it's easy enough, but it's still something that you probably need two or three people. What happens if you're um, a European European player play or a st- oceanic player like myself playing on a, a American server and no one's around in the afternoon you have to do a lot of this content by yourself um, and so you can't progress with your personal story that doesn't you know that's very very iffy in my opinion yeah. so it's and I, I like one of the things I also really didn't like is this kind of zerg rush mentality like when you 
we're surrounded by tons of people doing things and oh you have to make sure you do this event because you don't want to miss out because if the zerg kills it before you get it you have to sit around and like you know people negatively impact you that way because i like to go slow i talk to every npc i like to read it slowly you know get, soak up the atmosphere um and i can't do that when there's a massive zerg all around me and i'm trying to rush to the next area and make sure i get my hits on things mm. um so yeah yeah. There's a lot of lot of improvement that could be done um about the open world stuff relating to the personal story. Yeah. Um so if you had to choose them between completely instanced, you don't have to do any events um to mm. complete it or you do have to do events to complete it, but they s- somehow take on board, you know, what we've been saying and improve it to a point that you know, you it's acceptable and you enjoy, which would you rather do? That's difficult. Um, for personal opinion, I would say instance all the way. I am an introvert. I I love being like by my not by myself, but with a small group of people, reading what the text, having little things because they can fine tune things in instances so much better than they possibly could do in open world. Um, so, but. Yeah, at the same time, open world has its little gems, like having NPCs having conversations that you can pick up if you're near them. Yeah. Um, that's a little gem. Um, but personally, if I was thinking for everyone else, I think people would like the open events. But personally, I like my instances very much. I'm very much of the opinion of the open world events. Um, I actually, um, for the dry top releases, the first two episodes, I have yet to actually participate in one of the events for the meta event. It just... <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it just it's something that I think I think about, oh yeah, that's cool, that's a cool event, but I'm just not drawn to it. Like unless mm-hmm. I'd say unless I'm forced to do it, um I won't I won't necessarily do it anymore. Um because I just kinda think, what am I really gonna get out of it? Do I need to be doing this event to, you know, in progress what mm-hmm. I understand for the story to be? Um, yeah. And so in this instance I was forced to do the events and I ended up really liking them um you know I ended up enjoying them uh, even though I die a lot as a Zerka guardian in them um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as you saw earlier but um, uh, I think you were just off your game today <laughs> yeah, that's it that's <laughs> it have to, to complete the story and you only did it in half an hour within the book yeah <laughs> I just have to say we have some really good comments again. Oh, yeah. um, Blue Blob is saying, I think the story should be instance, but there should be extra open world stuff as well, like maybe perhaps optional. And there seems to be a lot of love for the instant story and perhaps optional open world stuff, maybe stuff that relates to the story or something like that, but not things that you require to progress. Yeah. Um, I definitely I definitely say instances for me, like these instances, I enjoyed more than the events. Um, there's just so many little things in them about. I especially like the one with uh, Timey this time around where she's making a little mm. device. Um, mm. That Councillor Flunt, you know what I think of him. I, mean, I can't <laughs> say it on stream, but it rhymes that with his rhymes name with anyway. <laughs> Uh, um, well, that's good because that lets us segue into our patch law. Yes. So we, we'll talk about all the law and the patchy stuff and my English is so wonderful. <laughs> as long as my, this is my dance move. Get all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> so about the patch law. law. So basically, um, this is probably where the spoiler warning is. Yeah. Um, we won't talk about it too much because we think most of you have probably done the patch already. But if you haven't, we'll just give you summaries. Um, so the patch, this one, uh, was basically like we discovered last uh, patch that Mordromoth, uh, we need we need allies to fight Mordromoth. So this one, we've gone to the Pale Tree and we've gone, we really need some help. And the Pale Tree is like, yes, I've known all along that Mordromoth is awakened. You're like, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Um, but basically this is just this patches us going around doing side quests to try and get all the leaders to join for this summit to talk about defeating Mordromoth. Um, so there's a lot of things happening. We uh, initially go and see the Pale Tree um, and then we go and see Timey and then we go and see... Uh, no, 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 Bram. No, no, Bram, no, no. <laughs> skipping ahead. <laughs> and then, and and the then Rock. Rock. <laughs> yeah, and we basically what happens in every single one is that the they meet up with the Destiny Edge um, 
you know, variant yeah. basically <laughs> of, of the Destiny Edge point one and point two, you know, they meet up and they go, they're like, well, we could talk to the leader and get them to join the summit, but there's something we'd like you to do first. And it really feels really contrived. Like they're just taking advantage of you, trying to get you to do the dirty work before they attend the summit. So um, there's lots of those sort of things um, and there's a lot of tension rising regarding Queen Jenna. Um, a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure if you watch uh, Wooden Potatoes, a lot of people have been saying that Queen, there's something going on Queen Jenna. Why do we know about this Crichton locket and why um, what, she's being invited to the summit um, and do all these things are going on around her. And there's also tension regarding Taimi and the other Azuras, um, the other Azura. Uh, like you said, plunked, and there seems to be a woman or one in one of not a woman, a female Azura in the troop of uh, Azura that followed Timey to uh, Scarlet's lab uh, in the leyline hub. That was like uh, upstart, you know, impossible. Oh, yeah. You know, she's being. I think she's going to like initiate a coup. Personally, uh, or, or try, try and steal Timey or hurt Timey in some way. She seems way too suspicious. Um, and a lot of people, from what I get on Reddit, are so suspicious of the, so suspicious of the pale tree. Um, they feel like this pale tree is holding something back. And I have to say, if you are a Silvari character, you'll get an extra little bit of information that other characters won't get. And um, one of them is one of the information is basically the pale tree says. I am protecting you. I provide a barrier between so, um, evil, more, something more evil than you can possibly imagine. And she's definitely holding something back and she knows stuff. But And she actually sends off one of the other Silvari. Yeah. Like, she's like, bye go, bye. Off, go off. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to hear this. It kind of really sounds like she's protecting the Silvari like a mother would protect yeah. children. Um, yeah, like we've got a comment in the uh, in the chat which says i can't okay. trust that tree she's hiding something <laughs> <laughs> which i totally agree she is hiding something but i think she's got a good heart behind her yeah i i kind of get the feeling she's i mean she you tell her um, that you went through omad's machine and mm. i kind of i kind of get the feeling that she's like oh crap scarlet 2.0 yeah. again yeah yeah uh, well everyone was worried about that <laughs> <right>, yeah <laughs> um but yeah i I do agree with the suspicions. Um, don't trust plants, basically. <laughs> <Just that. laughs> That's why I have none in my house. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll continue with them. Um, and this is where it kind of gets a little bit spoilery. Oh, I actually put the quote in here. She actually said, I stand between you and the greatest darkness you have ever known. Um, and this actually relates to some of the, um, oh, and this, sorry, I'll just going back to the chat again, because someone said, uh, to be honest, I suspect Silvari are related to the dragon. This is a really popular theory, and I'm pretty sure most people know this theory that, you know, um, people think that the Pale Tree is a champion of Mordromoth, but it has been molded in the right way. And this, thank you so much for making the comment, because... Um, it actually relates to the next thing, the mysterious vine back piece. And um, this is a back piece that you get. You find a, a guy finds a seed and sends it to you, and you go through all this hard work to make this beautiful pot for it, and you plant it, and you feed it planty. What's it called? Pliable plant food and meaty plant food, and you you tend to it, and um, eventually it sprouts. And the caption on it is very interesting because it says this plant or this sprout has been grown under the good influence of a hero of Tyria. So this is really interesting um, because the good influence, you know, Rowan, when he brought back the seed of the pale tree, it was tended under the good influence of Ventari. So the the theory that you have about the, you know, being related to Mordromoth is very it seems like they're heading in that direction, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's really some cool stuff came out of this patch that isn't quite overt. Like, it's not in your face, but it's really the little things. Um, we had a question from Dragon Season. Um, is she even able to leave the Omphalos chamber, um, the Pearl oh. Tree? Because, uh, you know, she she's basically said, you all come to me, I'm not going anywhere. You know, yeah. bring them all here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
That is interesting because I don't think she would. Uh, she, there's never been any mention of her stepping outside of the grove. No. And something that someone else mentioned was um, the you know the fact that she mentions, "Oh, I stand between you and a great evil you've never known," and the fact that Scarlet went bonkers when she saw that evil, but she doesn't. She doesn't um, tell any of the Silvari that try and get out of her out of her protection. For example, the Nightmare Court and the um, Soundless. She doesn't tell any of them that you know the, leaving her protection, especially the Soundless. The Soundless are good Silvari. They just don't want to hear all the background noise of the pale tree. She doesn't tell them, like, by disconnecting to me, you are vulnerable. Um, she just kind of hides it, and there must be a secret as to why she doesn't want to tell him that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, we actually, when we meet, when we speak to the pale tree, we're only speaking to her avatar, aren't we? Yeah. So, surely that should be able to leave? Cause I, well, I know in Guild Wars 1... Um, mm. in Nightfall Prophecies, one of them, um, <laughs> you do speak to all the avatars of the gods, like, around mm. you, um, so surely they've left somewhere to go there, and just, mm. I don't know. Um, yes, this, I think it's different in a sense, um, the avatar of the tree, is she, when you talk to her about the fact that she isn't the tree... I think she's the closest thing she the tree can be like it's kind of up in the air whether she is the entity of the tree or if she is um something else because when this firstborn talk about talking to the mother tree I don't think it's a person they're talking to they talk about whispering to the tree itself um and the tree will refuses to talk to any other silvari um, and that was a big point about the guy that started the Nightmare Court was he was very sore about the fact that he couldn't be talked to by the tree and then the tree would only talk to the firstborn even though he was only secondborn. Um, so he was really sore about that. So now the avatar of the tree is actually talking to everyone. So is the avatar of the tree really the tree or is she the closest that the tree can get? It's very hard yeah. to tell. Hopefully to be answered soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the other thing, if we're if we're done with that, I'm sorry if I no no we're done with that. I, you know I'm not like a law guru <laughs> like you, so it's like you know. The other thing about the patch is this is a spoiler, so I'm just quickly saying um, if you haven't finished the final cutscene, this will tell you what will happened in the final cutscene. But we see Ridlock jump into a portal of the mist. My baby. <laughs> Your baby, a witty Ridlock. <laughs> um, but he actually he tries to cleanse, break the curse, and really any of us knew that he wouldn't be able to break the curse because um, you know it needed to be one of the royal blood. But he tried to do it anyway, and it resulted in the uh, sword going into a portal of the mist, and him going, oh, I really need that sword, I can't just let it go, and he jumping in after him. And this is really important um, because it's like one of those things like, did the sword open the mist, did something go wrong, and did it, you know, did a haywire go? Is And one thing people mention is that the sword looks like it was going to someone. And um, like it would, it, you know, it opened it up and it went itself down into it. And some people are saying, is it going to its previous owner or the real, the true heir of um, the true heir of Ascalon? And there's a lot of things coming out out of it, a lot of speculation. Um, but I think the biggest question you and I have is, why does no one care yeah. that he's gone into the mists? It's, Seriously. It's like rock, rocks goes, oh no, and then a couple of lines later, ah, see you later. <laughs> See yeah. you at the meeting. Is, yeah, well, at least the, at least we've got people to meeting. Yeah. I guess that's it. Like the mist is a scary place. Like even the can not the can uh, the um, oh that leader guy, the smurder. Im, im, um, Impera. Um, Imperator. Imp there we go. I, I'm such a bad char. <laughs> my main, and I can't even say the words. <laughs> Yeah, even the people in the um, chat agreeing with us. Yeah, they were far too casual with it. Um, he was like, don't worry, he could deal with it. I feel more. I'm like, I feel more for the things that are in there. I'm like, have you been to the mist? Have you done a fractal of the mist? Have you seen that jaw, jade, jade more thing? It's 
crazy. And some someone also mentions we constantly go into the mess. In Guild Wars One, we just jumped in there. Oh, and I think we've just lost Ali. Um. Okay. So, hello. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> It's just not a proper freaking podcast without disconnections. <laughs> and there's a wonderful advert for restaurant deals in your city. Um, so feel free to put your camera back on. I'm trying to, but uh, it doesn't want me to. Hang on, let okay. me give me a second. Oh, it was going so well as well. And she's gone completely. There we go. There we go. Video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Australian internet brain, 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 our prime minister, <laughs> blame our prime minister. Uh, yay, putting politics into conversations. Good job, Casey. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the mist. Yeah, so the mist, yes, and you know, people, uh, people have got a lot of uh, ideas of as to what he might be doing, but. I just have to say, um, when we were talking about it, I was like, the mist is a scary place, man. And it reminded me of this um, text about the guy, I think it was the first, um, ma not magician, warlock, wizard, uh, arcanist. I lost, the, I lost the law thing. Sorcerer. But basically this... Sorcerer, a, yay! Um, this is the first sorcerer that went into the mist, and um, it basically didn't end well for him. For him, he, there were the souls were so angry that he, they, he had trespassed upon their place that they ripped him apart. Um, so it's not a stroll in the park, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to the mist on holiday. That's for sure. <laughs> um, we've had a comment. He might be heading into the underworld. I would love that if he was, and we could go there. I, that would just make my day. I spent <laughs> I spent like the last two years of my Guild Wars One life just in there. Um, back before they nerfed the um, 600 HP monk thing, but we won't go into that. It's, I'm over it. <laughs> um, I I definitely think that they're planning to do something interesting with Ridlock. Like they sent him there for a reason. Yeah. Uh, and they, you're going to do this cool story with where you're in the mists going after him. Because how lame would it be if, like, you do this story and then he's like, I'm back with my sword. <laughs> it oh, was a scroll in the bar. Not, not accepting but, that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, do, uh, my uh, Ridlock accent is not very good. But we're having um, Jason on the show next week. So it, it he's going to do an awesome char voice for us. Yeah. I uh, can't wait for that. Um, <laughs> By the way, if you want to hear, he does a really great char voice. If you want to hear something in a char voice, something crazy like, uh, I'm going to get him to say, I love L Logan, or I want Logan to be my cuddle buddy, or something like that. <laughs> if you want to hear a char voice saying so, something ridiculous, put it in the um, chat thing and we can get him to say it. Definitely. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good coverage of it, don't you think? Yeah. Pretty we, meaty we, coverage of it. Did it justice, I think? Hmm? I think we did it justice without spoiling it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, you can get into so many little things, but really, uh, yeah, the, I just said the most important stuff. <laughs> Oh, I like the comment about when um, Ridlock comes back. I'm back and I brought presents. Throws ghost, ghost weapons on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, someone also mentioned about Rurik. That is really interesting. It was Rurik's sword. Would we go and visit Rurik and see Rurik again? Because a lot of people would like to see him. That would be quite cool. I know. I personally didn't like him very much. I thought he was a bit of a prat, but... What do uh, I know? <laughs> I still like to see him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so le I think that's enough for the um, the patch. There's just a few other little things we wanted to talk about um, about the changes. There was so many patch updates, um, not patch balance and glitch fixing and things all in the patch note so you can see them but none of them are really they're just balance and polish that sort of stuff but some big things that changed was the temple armor um is now set for example if you go to duena you can buy the whole cleric set and if you go to the grenth you can buy the whole 
berserker set at the um, temple karma vendors now. So that's really good. I really like that a lot better than it was before. Yeah, I like that as well. Uh, and it was actually it's quite funny that happened when I was um, getting my husband his berserker gear. Uh, I was like, go to the Grant, buy the shoes and the mantle, then go to the Duena and get this and this one. And now it's all fixed. Um, so I'm really glad that's happened. It's just little, there's little things that make quality of life better. Um, another little thing that happened was the Fort Mariner Waypoint has been destroyed. Uh, you can no longer port there. It kicks you off somewhere further away, which I really do not like. I really do not like. I think it's... Uh, Anet's mental manipulation to make us really hate the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have Look, all these people it. are dying. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't get close to your bank. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's something that also happened. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of waypoints are being destroyed, actually. Yeah. Uh, which is like little little uh, edging. I think they're going to do something about that. I don't know why or how they're doing it. But um, they, I think they're going to do something. What was that? Mounts incoming. <laughs> <laughs> I I just have imagined like imagine this full out like heavy decked epic looking armored guy, and he's just on a doliac, <laughs> and he's like got his sword up and he's trundling <laughs> along on his doliac. That's what I imagine. Uh. Um, and so the other thing that happened was the Lissa back piece has actually is now animated. Before it was um, just you know sparkly and stuff, but now the face uh, turns. You know how Lissa is that god with two? She's a twins and she's got two masks and two face that sort of thing. Um, well, now the face in the back piece actually turns around, so you see two different kinds of faces, which is really yeah, cool. That's quite cool. Yeah, I yeah. have a feeling it was meant to be that way, but it didn't get that way yeah. in the end. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy it happened now. Um, oh, I like the comment about the mounts. I wrote that Azura ride Norn and Char around. I yeah. like that so much. <laughs> Um, yes, and they're also about the um, waypoints. Timey's machine is meant to f you know, fix the waypoints and making it part of the story. That is really cool. And she says she'll have the results, whether it's working or not, in two weeks. And basically next patch, yeah. we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, and the last little tidbit is um, kind of a creepy thing. Someone actually mentioned in our chat earlier, uh, except I just kind of glossed over it, sorry. <laughs> um, but basically, the ghost of Fort Salma. Ooh. Yeah. Have you seen the ghost of Fort Salma? Have you gone there? Uh, I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I haven't gone there in-game right. yet. Um, yeah. But I I've seen it on Reddit. Yeah. It's weird, isn't so, it? So, it's weird. So, there's um, at Fort Salma, and this is a spoiler, but you... You know, we've been saying spoilers, yeah. but basically at Fort Salma, there is now a ghost that stands on the um, ridge, the uh, door, the wall, uh, wall? the wall, <laughs> <laughs> the wall, um, and it's, she stands on the wall and she's looking out and it is actually the ghost of Belinda Delacroix, uh, who died in that fort just last patch. And... Uh, She's just standing there staring out as a ghost and it's very quite creepy. And you can actually get, even though it's meant to be closed off, there is a way to get in into the fort. And you get into the fort and it says beneath it, Belinda Delacroix and really low that you can't see from the distance. And she just stands there and when you talk to her, she disappears. That's the creepiest part. Yeah. <laughs> Um, doesn't she I'm reappear after 10 minutes or so, I think I saw someone say. Yeah, um, yeah, she does reappear eventually. It is weird, isn't it? How She's definitely got a role to play, I think. Um, you reckon? I think so. I mean, I saw a lot of people saying they were expecting Belinda to be more of a major character, um, especially like mm. seeing how she was introduced at the end of last season and then the kind of role she was taking mm. coming into this. And I was really surprised when I just saw her tangled there in that vine um, uh, yeah. um some people were theorizing it might have something to do with uh, might have something to do with marjorie being a necromancer i'm not yeah. I, i'm not 100 percent convinced on that i don't know if you're if i was a necromancer 
and someone in my family died, the first thing I'd do is go, oh, let's bring him back as a ghost. I'd, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd do that. Um, maybe but she Marjorie did. is a weird character, in my opinion. She is one of those characters that you don't exactly like. I For Casimir, I feel like she's a cliche, not a cliche, she's not a cliche, but she's her personality is enough for me to know where to expect to go with her and what she would do in certain situations and all about her personality. Marjorie it is a diff completely different book. She, I don't know how she would react in things. And she is the sort of character that I expect would go bonkers. Like, I kind of expect that she would be like, go a bit crazy, maybe become an evil person or something like that when she's in grief. She, she could do. Um, something that has just popped into my mind um, is that, you know, we haven't done anything for the humans yet for, to get them to the summit. Um, Queen Jenna just agreed to go. Something mm. could potentially happen with Marjorie that we have to fix before, oh. you know, the outcome. Um, maybe, I don't it's know. If I'm right on this, then everyone has to send me some gold or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just decide that. <laughs> if I'm right, everyone sends me money. <laughs> Um, my personal theory is that, um, you know how, like, you go around Guild Wars now and, um, there's, like, ghosts from Guild Wars 1 that just pop up randomly, um, like, just, you know, as a homage to yeah. past, you know, past characters. I think she was kind of served that purpose, like, even when F Salma gets rebuilt and everything happens, her ghost will be there and people will be like, oh, this ghost is here, like people who's exploring it who didn't do the living story, this ghost is here and they'll go and Google. Like I Google Guild Wars 1 characters when I can't remember who they are and I go and Google and I'm like, oh, it's that person. They did this and this and I wonder if she will serve as that sort of marker, like, oh, this important person died here and her ghost is here, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely don't think we've heard the last of what's happening with Marjorie on it though. Um, mm. it seemed She reacted weird. Yeah, she reacted I mean obviously she reacted badly so you know her sister just died but she react she kind of she definitely just completely broke down which is something we haven't seen from her yet. Um mm. she, she kind of felt like she just pushed everyone away uh, on that leap. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely think there's going to be something where we need to help her kind of come back into the group. Um, yeah, yeah. the way she pushed away Casimir was a bit odd. Yeah. Uh, at first I thought it was because, like, maybe she hadn't told her family that she was gay and they were, like, entering upon those themes yeah. in the game, which is really important themes. I mean, those sort of themes are quite interesting and socially important, but I don't know if Guild Wars really wants to venture into that territory, so maybe it's a different, you know, she she doesn't want Marjorie, um, Casimir to come because she's going a little bit bonkers. Yeah. Thing. So, mm. shall we move on then? Um, yeah. To some data mined tidbits. Um, so. Tidbits. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. Um, it's. I like it. It's cute. <laughs> tidbits. Okay, so the first thing that has been uh, data mined from this release is the uh, Monkey King tonic. Um, seemingly kind of random since we haven't really heard, you know, there's nothing really going on at the moment that would involve a monkey king um i mm. will i have to just say that yeah. that's actually released it's not data mined it's actually oh, it's, in the oh, chest so sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> wrong bit um actually <laughs> well, well actually <laughs> <laughs> sorry um go on go on so uh there will be a link in the show notes and there's a link in the chat right now if you're watching this live if you haven't yet seen it um so what do we think this is all about um could potentially be return the super adventure box um we do have guild wars 2 guild war i said it right the first time guild wars 2's second anniversary coming up on the 28th of august um i don't think last year they did the whole crown pavilion thing i don't think they're going to do that again because of what they did with the chinese launch you know i don't think mm -hmm. i i just don't think it'd go down well again having it so close um yeah i think there is probably a strong possibility of being Super Adventure Box considering the last release was now 10 months ago um, mm, in the whole back, very well received. back to school thing yeah um, and the the whole world too was very orientally and um, it would fit, it fits basically is what we're saying mm. um, and the Monkey King is sort of like a weird character that you can so easily like 
put into that world and do things with. And um, but I'm interested because they it's realistic sprite in all the sprites. Or well, no, I say sprite because we're getting into <laughs> you know that sort of territory. Yeah. But his model is very realistic compared to everything else in there. So I wonder what they're going to do with that. Mm. Interesting one. <laughs> Um, I, I definitely think that Sab is coming back. That's my... I, I'm going to put money on it. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be the... Um, at least part... If not for the celebration, it's coming back at least pretty soon, I'd say. Um, wasn't there a thing about they were going to take a break after four episodes of this or something about that? Um, oh, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. I'm sure someone quoted something. Like there was theorizing that the B after a couple of episodes they take a, like a little mini break again, and it, oh, yeah, it yeah. fits if next episode after Dragons Reach Part Two they take a break for the anniversary stuff, um, mm. which could very well be SAB or it could be something else um, potentially. So there's been data mined uh, outfit models, which again I will link in the show notes and in the chat. Um, and to me, these look very sort of um, Crichton and quite regal, quite f- quite like for a formal event. Um, yeah, again, you're right. That m- could be something to do with the anniversary. Um, potentially, I'm not. I think you might be right. Because um, the anniversary is also obviously Queen Jenna's something on the throne. It'll be like a year that doesn't really matter, but it'd still it'd still be a year, wouldn't it? I feel so stereotypically girly that I'm getting so excited that there might be like a ball with because one of them looks like a dress yeah. and the one of them looks like a tail coat and oh I'm getting so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I hope like a, a uh, fight breaks out during the ball or something like that and we got like throw drinks at people oh, and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean that's really all I can see from the models. Um, so mm. it could be SAB or it could be something else like Queen Jennery again I don't know um. it depends when they go with the story because there is a lot of tension mounting around Queen Jenna and the Crichton throne so it depends where they're going to go with that they could incorporate like the story into the whole um, anniversary and the fact that last time it was the jubilee and you know that yeah. sort of stuff so they could incorporate it mm. Mm. very interesting yes um, I think that's it for the data mine stuff from this release. Um, mm. Do you have? Oh, we've had a ch- uh, comment in chat. I think that only be for story, referring to the models. SAB is considered a special event, so we might get that. Yeah, th- mm. probably. Yeah, does make sense. I think there's also interesting to remember that um, Sab also had its storyline like it was very small but sab had a real world storyline about moto and moto didn't uh know that there was a genie programmed into the machine and in the end the genie gives you instructions and you go and do the instructions and you end up sabotaging another crew's work and it never like it was really creepy and it was never explained um and so there's some real world kind of thing in there that you know, are they going to tie it to the story? Or is that something separate? Mm. Um, so we are kind of nearing the end. Have you got anything else you'd like to bring up? No, no. Just how much I'm so happy how well the turnout has been for our first I know. episode, and I'm, I'm so happy I'm about really it. I'm really surprised. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for uh, watching us live. Of course, if you're watching us uh, on the recorded on our YouTube, uh, don't forget you can leave your comments below. You know, let us know what you think. We will read them and reply. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Don't forget that we are live every Thursday at 10 a.m. GMT on twitch.tv slash guildmag if you fancy coming and chatting to us. And I guess that's it from me and Casey for this week. So we will see you in seven days' time. Bye. Bye.